video number 20 is about uh, saving uh, blob sets or statistical parametric maps so you can use them in different kinds of visualization like montages and overlays and it's a great way to investigate multiple contrasts and conditions. We've been looking at our results and flicking between the, the contrasts we have um, just to see if we've got things going on in the same places. And we've tried rendering uh, onto a three-dimensional surface, but what would be nice is just to have a view like this, just you know, transverse, coronal, sagittal, whatever, but just with two more than one blob on it, with the that maybe the object data and the face data together. We can do that, but there's a, a small amount of work involved. This particular set of blobs, this view with this uh, this t threshold defined by our corrected p-value and this extent threshold showing these blobs, we can save that as a 3D image. So in this uh, results panel here, if we go to display and save, it says you can save thresholded SPM, all clusters, binary, current cluster. We're going to save the thresholded statistical parametric map. That is not every blob but only those blobs we can see here which have been which survive the uh, 0.05 corrected threshold and have a t value above 4.86 so let's save the threshold at spm for objects minus scrambled it asks us for an output file name it will save this as um, a 3d file a nifty file dot nii in the current working directory always a good idea to know what that is because at the moment i'm not entirely sure if you go to utilities you can ask but um, for the moment before I forget I will save this and this is the objects um, I'm just going to write minus scramble just so I know exactly what it is I wonder where it's put that if I go to utilities PWD stands for print working directory um, it tells us what directory we're in and it says we're in our group stats directory okay um, MATLAB nowadays tells you all these things anyway, so we're in the group stats directory, so that is where it's saved that file. In fact, um, as ever, the command window has all the useful information. It has written objects minus scrambled that dot nii file in there. Fantastic. So now if we go back to our previous contrast, which was faces minus scrambled, let's go to global max there. Let's have a look, check that looks okay. Let's now save that as well, the thresholded SPM, just call it faces minus scrambled. Let's save that too. Now we can, um, those these, these blob sets are saved as images, we can visualize them in, in other programs if we want to now, but we can go back to render, go to slice overlay. Before we do that, I just want to remind you or, or prompt you about something we were looking at before, and that is checking the, um, the coordinates of where our activation is. It's something that's easy to forget, um, but once you start working in normalized space using this Telirac coordinate system, um, we're using coordinates for the MNI uh, template uh, where we have our x y and z coordinates and we've got foci at minus 40 and plus 40 that is uh, left and uh, right um, it's important to get to know the coordinate system and know the extent of your activations going from about here a z of minus sort of uh, 18 or so up to a z of minus uh, four or five here this will come in useful in just a moment so if we go to render and slice overlay it says images to display we're going to one of the images we're going to display is this mean structural but we're also going to select uh, objects no faces faces minus scrambled and objects minus scrambled so I've selected three images one is a structural image and these two are these um, thresholded SPMs or blob sets that we've saved as well. So I now click done. In this window it asks us what are those images, what type of images they are. So the first image, the, the, the mean structural, is just a structural image. The second image, uh, faces minus scrambled, 
uh, what we call blobs or thresholded SPMs. And it says color map for image two, which are blobs, and the default is hot. This is the color scale it's going to use. Here we've got a red through white color scale um, for the T values, and our T values are all above sort of five ish, so they're all bright yellow through to white. But we can't use exactly the same color map for two different blob sets, or we won't be able to tell which is which. So what it's asking for is the name of a MATLAB color map. You've probably not come across these before. So if you just do a Google search for MATLAB color map names, or just MATLAB color map, um, then you should get a, a, if Google works well, you should get a, a list. there's even a, a, an image of the MATLAB color maps and the names. You could just click on one of those. And in just a fraction of a second, the MathWorks website comes up with the reference page for color map. It's actually also in the uh, MATLAB help. So if in the MATLAB command window, you just go doc color map, like that color spelt the American way, then that will come up also. Um, but here we go. We've got the color maps. If I scroll right down, we can see we've got the color maps. And the one it's suggesting is the one it's called hot, which goes from black through red, orange, yellow to white hot. Uh, and there are different color maps with different names. I think I'll go for autumn and winter for my blobs. So let's move that out of the way. So instead of hot, I'm going to go for autumn. I wonder why they call it autumn when they use American color. They should call it fall, really. It says image value range for color map. This means the SPM uh, has, um, that is the blobs, have T values in the range 0 to 6.9, and we're just going to use that whole range. The, the third image, also blobs, is the objects minus scrambled, and I think we, for this, we'll use, should we go for, for, for a summer or a winter? I think we'll use winter colors. So hot will use winter, and it's just giving us the range of the T values that are in the image. We'll just use all of those. It says image orientation axial, axial that is transverse, coronal, or sagittal, and I like transverse. And now it says slices to display in millimeters, and it's got a number, a colon, a number, and another colon, and that means go from this value to this value in steps of the intermediate value. We're not going to use those. What we just looked up were the uh, the Z axis measures for the extent of our blobs. And we think they go from about minus 20 on the Z. Um, now we could go up in steps of one millimeter at a time because our structural image has one millimeter resolution, but our, our, our functional images on which the stats were done only have two millimeter resolution. The original images were three millimeter resolution, but we, when we normalized, we resliced to two millimeter resolution. So there's no point going up in one millimeters because every other image will be identical to the previous one. And I think we went up to about minus four. So if we do that, the graphics window then displays the graphics window. Where's it gone? The graphics window now displays the slices from 20 in minus 20 in steps of 2 up to minus 4 um, with the uh, autumn color map and the winter color map. Autumn color map for the face data and the faces minus scramble contrast and the uh, autumn color, the winter color map for the object data. And so we can see um, on the right hemisphere we've got uh, the face locus or focus um, and that is seems to be separate from the slightly higher object focus whereas on our left hemisphere it's possible we've, we've actually got some overlap which may not be genuine overlap it may be that one participant's object overlaps with another participant's uh, faces and because the normalization uh, is only approximate puts everyone's brains in the same shape um, this can happen. 
So this figure, um, because we've carefully chosen the slices to display, you might want to use uh, all of that. And again, you could just do a save figure as, save it as an image file and pop it into a word processing document. And then label it properly because this, as it stands, it doesn't tell us what the contrasts are, it doesn't tell us what the study is, it doesn't tell us what the, the, the P threshold is or the correction, multiple comparisons correction or the extent or, or what this scale means. Um, it's actually T values. So you'd have to put all of that in. So that's a couple of ways of visualizing data, one of which involves saving your blobs. So that is how to save multiple blob sets or statistical parametric maps for later visualization, a very useful tool. Uh, I can't quite believe how long it has taken to do a few screen recordings to illustrate what I went over in a lecture in about 45 minutes. Maybe that shows that I do talk a little too quickly. Maybe it shows that I added a lot extra in here. I hope you found these useful. Any questions or comments, just let me know.